morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are, we are glad that you are with us. Welcome to the midweek Bible study for the Selang Church of Christ. If you have been to our building, you know where we are. We are in Bayan or city proper of Silang Cavini. If you are joining us from someplace else in the world or someplace else in the Philippines, that puts us about 30 miles or 50 kilometers south of Ninoy Aquino International Airport located in Metro Manila. We are glad that you are with us and we hope that our study of God's word is of benefit to you today. As always, we'll start with a prayer request. Ms. Cora, good Good morning. Hello, sweetheart. Uh, prayer request for for Ernest to get better, for Claudio, for uh, Rosella, Teresa, Daryl's wife. I don't know her name. Me either. And Comfort for the Esquivel family and Anderson family. And put the Croson family on there also. What happened to Croson? Mamiya. Yeah. You didn't know that. Okay. And Croson. C R O W S O N, Croson. Esquivel, E S Q U V I L. U I V A L, yes. V E L. Anderson. Anderson, Benita. You know how to spell Anderson, right, Rollick? Okay. Mary Christine Morales, good morning. No sound. Matthew We'll come back to you. You hear me now? Well, now yes. we hear you. <laughs> because I removed my headset. Okay, my prayer request always. Thanksgiving for all the blessings and continue healing and for uh, for Sir Ernest and all our family in Christ and guidance for everyone. That's it. Katrina, good morning. Good morning, brother. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my prayer request is, as always, Thanksgiving and also continuous growth for our family in Silang Church of Christ. And it is growing. So happy. Thank it you. is. <laughs> we are so happy and so glad that we have another brother in Christ. It, it's like a weed. It just keeps growing. God's word is like that. Mary yes. Faye, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. First, my prayer request will always be Thanksgiving for everyday blessing for our everyday life. And of course, um, healing and guidance for everyone. Okay. Julianne. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, my prayer request is continue for all the blessings, um, guidance for my family, and also um, pray for those, um, for those people who needs, uh, especially for those people who has sick illness. Um, uh, I'll pray that to God that they will um, heal. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So Raleigh, give us a prayer. Oh, 
Okay, let us uh, pray. Lord God, uh, thank you for this day that you have came in to each and every one of us. Thank you, God, uh, for the opportunity to learn and uh, learn to learn your uh, word, oh God. Lord, uh, we pray for the uh, everyone uh, to uh, seek the wisdom from you, oh God. Lord, we pray for uh, Miss Mary. So uh, he wants to thanks, uh, always thanksgiving to you, God, and continue healing and uh, guidance for everyone. Uh, we pray also for uh, Miss Katrina, uh, continuous uh, growth for the Church of Christ here in Silang, and always, God, uh, he wants to thank you for all the blessing. Lord God, uh, we pray also for uh, Miss Marepe. Uh, he has for everyday uh, guidance and the healing. And thanksgiving for every one of us, oh God. Lord, we pray also for uh, Miss Cora's. Uh, he, he asked for uh, uh, Sir Ernest to get better. And uh, for uh, Brother Claudio, Sela, and uh, Brother Pedro. Continuous uh, healing, oh God, and guidance. Lord, uh, we pray also for uh, the comfort. For our Esquivel family, Croson and uh, Anderson family, give the comfort of God. And uh, we pray also for Miss Julie, a continuous uh, blessing for everyone and healing for those who have sick, Lord. Uh, Lord, uh, we pray also for, for my family for uh, continuous blessing of God and good health for everyone. Lord, uh, we ask for your protection and guidance. And Lord, uh, we pray that you uh, forgive us for those uh, for our for our shortcomings, oh God. Thank you, and this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Uh, this is the first in a series of lessons. We are going to learn how to become fishers of men. However, before we start with that, I think it would be important that we explore the Great Commission, as it were, in the four places that it occurs in the New Testament. That being said, we'll start with Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. Cora? Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. Guys are ready. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother, Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. 19, Raleigh. You're muted, Raleigh. Okay. I'm sorry, sir. And verse 19. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. Okay. 20, Chrissy. When he says, at once they left their nets and followed him. 21, Katrina. Oops. 21. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. 22, Mary Faye. 22 says, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Now, how much faith did that take? A lot. Why? Because they follow Jesus right away without question. Without hesitation. Without hesitation. In, in the case of uh, Andrew and Peter, um, they left their way of living. Mm -hmm. In the case of James and John, it was a little bit different in that they left the boat, that they left their family business. And if you had a family business and you and your brother were working for your mom and one day you said, oh, I'm going to leave and go follow this teacher. How do you think your mom would react? 
Raleigh. I think, sir, my mom will uh, sad, sir, or confused <laughs> for what uh, I decide. <laughs> okay. Understand, one of the things we want to be careful about doing, and we want to be really sure when we deal with scriptural people, that these are just real people. Sometimes we look at them and go, oh, well, they would be, he would be so happy because, but we don't, they're just real people and they don't all have faith or perfect knowledge. In fact, not even Andrew, by the way, who was the first apostle called, had perfect knowledge. I'm afraid that if you walked off of the business, your parents might be angry. Yes. What do you think, Katrina? Uh, Chrissy? They will kill you. They will what? They will kill you because you decide uh, against their... Okay. Their and somehow Mary Faye and Katrina swap spots. So Mary Faye, what do you think? Well, same as you, sir. I think um, if they were just an ordinary people and depending on their business, um, doing that decision will make them angry and disappointed as well. Okay. Katrina? My, my parents will, will be upset and I think they won't understand the reason why you will do that. The reason behind. Okay. Julie? Sorry, sir, can you please repeat the questions in that? Okay. How do you think, if you were, understand, Andrew and Peter left their jobs, right? However, yeah. James and John left the boat that they owned with their father. They just walked off of the family business and said, good luck, Dad. <laughs> How do you think your parents would have responded? Maybe the parents of John and... His brothers here, maybe uh, don't ever come back and uh, don't you ever uh, come back or else I'm going to spunk your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Now that's true, right? But we all had to make similar decisions when we decided to become Christians. Correct. Correct. Cora, when you became a Christian, was your family happy about it? Uh, not that I know about my parents um, thinking that I'm doing the wrong thing, but I think they were just like uh, thinking that, yeah, that's your decision, but make sure you're doing the, the right decision, something like that. Okay. Julie. Because, being a Catholic, it's different. Okay. Julie. Well, at first, uh, they again, so when I asked them, I question that, uh, Mom, uh, can I join with them? I mean, can I be baptized and, to, uh, and start to follow Jesus? And they said, why? You're a Catholic. And I told them, uh, yes, but it doesn't mean um, if I'm Catholic, I, I, I don't have a privilege to choose even at, at this age because that time, sir, I'm only 20, 21. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I start to think that, mm, yeah, maybe I'll do my decision because I'm old enough to do the right and wrong. Okay. Yeah, and that's right. Raleigh. Sir, uh, at, uh, at first, sir, uh, they don't believe me that uh, I that I become a uh, uh, born again Christian because uh, they said to me that uh, uh, I am a rude person, sir. I'm and 
and then they do not believe that I can change my way of life. But uh, I work for that, sir, and uh, they see that uh, they, there is improvement. So okay. That's it, sir. Chrissy. And ask them. I just decided to myself. You just decided for yourself? Okay. Mary yes. Faye. Uh, in my case, sir, um, I'm not living with my parents when I decided to be a Christian. And even if I am with them, I know they will be supportive of me. Because I, ha I have a lot of brothers and sisters. They have different... I have a sister which is Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a sister which is born again, different congregation. Yeah. yeah um, like we have our own people to choose. Um, what we think is, what best. Okay. What is best? Well, I'm kind of more like Relic. When I became a Christian, my friends were engaged in worldly behavior with me. So all of your drinking, clubbing, partying, gambling, girl chasing friends, do you think they want to hang out with you now that you're a Christian? No. Um, then my... No, they don't want you around. Really? Because the, the things that are motivating you as a Christian are different than what they are in the world. And if, if people are engaged in sinful behavior, then it doesn't make them feel better if you're standing there not participating. Then they, they, they would prefer that you don't be around. Yeah. Okay, that's, hey, just tell them the truth, okay? All right, let's go over to Mark. Mark chapter 1, verse 16. Julie, unmute, please. Mark chapter 1, verse 16. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Okay, 17, Cora. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send, send you out to fish for people. And I will make you become fishers of men. Uh, hold on a second, let me look. By the way, do you know... People might work here because you know what the Greek word is? It's anthropos. And that does not that does not have either a female nor a des no more that that I can talk. It is neither male nor female. It is what they would call gender neutral. It is anthropos. Fishers of people. In my case, it's a good thing because I've caught more women than men. Yep. Ha 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 ha. Our congregation is mostly women, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Rollick, uh, no, is it core? Is it you? You got 17, 18, Rollick. Verse 18. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. Okay. 19, please, Chrissy. 19 says. When he had gone a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Okay, and 20, very fast. Finally, without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. So, of course... Dad was really pleased about this. We've talked about that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
this is where Jesus Christ is going to make us fishers of men. This is not just to the apostles. This is not just to the minister. It is to all Christians. Now we'll go to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Katrina, start us in verse 1, please. Luke 5, verse 1. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. Okay. Mary Faith, uh, stand, not Mary Faith, Mary, Julianne, verse 2, please. In verse 2, and he, saw, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out them and were washing their nets. Verse 3, Cora. Verse 3 says, he got into one of the boats and one belonging to Simon and asked him to put out a little, a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Okay. Four, please, Rolick. Verse 4. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the tip and let down your nets for a catch. Verse 5, please, Chrissy. 5-5, five, five, Simon answered, Master, we we'll work hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Okay. Mary Faye, verse 6, please. Verse 6 says, When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Oh, that sounds like a pretty good haul, right? Mm -hmm. Seven, Katrina. You're muted. Seven, they signaled to their partner in the other boat to come and help. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're good. Yes. Verse seven. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. Okay, nine, Could, uh, Julie. Eight. Eight. Verse eight, but when Simon Peter saw it, he, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Okay, Cora nine. Verse nine says, "For he and his, for he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken." Rolick. Verse ten, Rolick, you're muted. Okay. And so also were James and John, sons of CVD. Over partners with Simon, and Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. Okay. And 11. Chrissy. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. So, what is your opinion? What do you think? How much faith did it really take? especially considering the fact that their family was probably not thrilled. That's a nice way of me saying possibly upset. In order for us to become fishers of men, there are some things that we must believe. Daniel chapter 2, verse 28, Mary Faye. Twenty-two. Two twenty-eight. Two twenty-eight. 
Daniel chapter 2, verse 28 says, But there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. He has, he has shown King Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar what will yes. happen. Nebuchadnezzar, what will happen in days to come? Your dream and the visions that pass through your mind as you were lying in bed are these. Okay. So what would you say the first thing that we must believe is? With regards to the, the fishermen? Well, if we're going to be fishers of men, if we're going to tell people the story of the gospel... What is the first thing that we have to believe? I think, number one, you're supposed to be a good example. Wait, what does it say in Daniel chapter 2, verse 28? Um, there is God. Thank yeah. you. There is a God in heaven, right? We got to believe yes. that first. If we don't believe that, we're not going to be able to talk to people, right? Yep. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, Katrina. Genesis 2, 7 says, Then the Lord God formed the, man, formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. So what is the second thing we probably need to believe? We are created by God. That we are created by God. There is a God. He made us, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Hebrews chapter one. Julie. Verse 11. Verse one. You were, you were thinking 11, one, which is faith is the evidence of things not seen. Yeah. But you Verse should recognize this one too. Hebrews one, one. Ah, yes. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, long ago at many times, in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. Cora, verse 2, please. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2, it says, but in this, in this last days, he had spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heirs of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. Okay, so what is the next thing we have to believe? That God spoke to ancestors and God appointed us as um, son. He appointed the son as. Well, we're getting there, for, but you're, you're going too far ahead. The next thing we have to believe is God has spoken. Yeah, God spoke to ancestors. God spoke to us. John chapter 3, verse 16. Raleigh. Okay, so can I go back one more time? The first go one ahead, was Sarah. the first one was Daniel. Daniel chapter two, verse twenty-eight. We have to believe first that there. We have to believe that there is a God, and then God spoke. No, God created us. Genesis created. chapter 2, verse 7. Okay, and then spoke. God has spoken to us. Spoken. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. And now. Okay. John chapter 3, verse 16. Raleigh? 16. Ooh. John 3, 16, sir? Yes. Okay, sir. For God so loved the Lord that gave his only son, so that no believe in him shall not be perished, but have an eternal life. So we have to believe what? That God has a son, right? He only has, how many sons does he have? One. One. <laughs> the correct answer is one. You got to be careful. I'll check you every once in a while, okay? Now, the son came into the world, right? Mm -hmm. Why did he come to the world? 
John chapter 12, verse 47. Chrissy? Forty-seven says, "If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world." So, why did Jesus come to the earth? Save the world. To to save the world, right? Matthew chapter twenty, verse twenty-eight. Mary Fay. What's the verse again? Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. Oh, 2028. It says here, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So who did he come to earth to, what did he come to do? To serve. And to give his life for many, right? Okay. But he's he's giving his life for the righteous, isn't he? Yes. Um, Is he giving his life for those who deserve it? For the one who believes? No. No. For everyone who believes. Matthew chapter 9, okay. verse 13. Who's reading? Who's reading? Katrina. Uh, Matthew 9, 13. Yes, Go and please. learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Sinners to repentance, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So why did Jesus come and die on earth? For the sinners. For the sinners, right? so that the sinners might have an eternity in heaven. By the way, that would include me. Now, we saw in Mark oh, chapter 1. Us. Go ahead, say it again, Kat. It is all of us. It's all of us, okay. How do you Romans know that? 10. Romans 10, 9. What's it say? For all who have seen and fall short of the glory. That's of not 10, 9. Oh, Three it's 323. 323. Mm -hmm. It is. We have 323. Mm -hmm. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Very good. That is wrong. But we're learning, right? That's we if we don't make mistakes, we won't learn. Yes. Um, we saw in Mark chapter one that Jesus told the apostles and us that he's going to make us fishers of people, okay? Anthropos is the Greek word there. So that's people. That's not men because men has a masculine connotation and anthropos does not. Uh, at the very beginning of his ministry, Jesus is going to emphasize to the disciples the great need to save the souls of people. We're going to pay attention and we're going to learn how Jesus personally done, did this. And then how his disciples imitated him. And hopefully we will be able to imitate the disciples. Uh, the mission of Jesus. He's going to, let's go to Matthew chapter 9. Start us in verse 35. Julie. Matthew. 
Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, said here, And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction. Okay, 36, Cora. 36, it says, When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Okay. 37, Raleigh. And 37. Then he said to, the, to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Jesus loved all people. And he preached publicly to groups as small as one. John chapter 3 and to the multitude at the Sermon on the Mount. It broke Jesus' heart when he saw people refuse the gospel, the salvation he was offering them. However, there's also the individuals, and it's very frequent, it seems, that the masses rejected Jesus. And when there was a mass... Let's read what John chapter 6, verse 66 has to say. John chapter 6, verse 66. Chrissy? 666. Six sixty six says, From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Wow. Think about that. Many followed Jesus. No, many turned away and did not follow him anymore. Uh, it seems that Jesus did most of his great work on a personal level. He worked with people and built relationships with them. You know, they, we have a saying in the States that uh, Jesus Christ, nobody cares how much you know until they know that you actually care. Now, we meet Nicodemus in John chapter 3. So start us in John chapter 3, verse 1. John chapter 3, verse 1. Mary Faye? John chapter 3, verse 1 says, Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. Okay. Um. Nicodemus is an interesting guy, but we have too much material for tonight, so I'm just going to go on by that. We'll talk about Nicodemus at another time. Katrina, verse 2, please. 3, 2. By night, uh, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. I normally ask when we're studying this, I would normally ask why Nicodemus came at night. And there's two possible because, reasons. Because he doesn't want to be seen by by the people because he is a Paris. a man of a man of a Jewish man with ruling con council. Okay, and that's it. That's possibility number one. What's the second possibility? Uh maybe he wants to talk to Jesus one on one. Alone. Alone, yeah. Maybe he didn't want to wait in front of a crowd, behind a crowd. Yeah, yes. Right? That's a possibility. You see, Scripture doesn't tell us, and we can hypothesize, but hypothesis, hypothesis is exactly that. It's hypothesis. We're not going to put any scriptural weight on what somebody, including me, happens to think. Uh, we're going to see Nicodemus again. We're going to see Nicodemus again. Go to John chapter 19 and start us in 38. Mary Faye? Uh, should I have a short question? A re really quick question. 
What is oh. a rabbi? A rabbi is a teacher. Sure. And in fact, hold on. You're going to make me do this, so I'll do it. Let me get out Re reference material. Rabbi denotes one who holds a respected position. It's an official. It is used in uh, formally. It is called rabbi. It means teacher. Uh, Strong's Concordance number 4806. And it's actually spelt R-H-A-B-B-I in Greek. That's a transliterated word. Okay. Now you just learned more about rabbi than you knew before, right? Katrina, are you up? Yes, okay, yes. let's hear it. John, John 1938. John 1938. After distinct Joseph of Arithmetia, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus and Pilate give him permission. So he came and took away his body. 39, Julie. And 39, Nicodemus also, who, are, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of mirror and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. Okay, Cora. 40, it says, taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrap it, and the spices and with the spices in strip on, of linen. This was in accordance with the Jewish burial custom. 41, Rolick. Forty-one. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. Okay. 42, Chrissy. Because it was the Jewish day of uh, preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Okay. okay. Now, these are the only two places we see Nicodemus in the New Testament. However, extra biblical history books tell us that he became a minister. He uh, served in uh, churches and preached Jesus until the day God called him home. Uh, another example of Jesus ministering one-on-one -on -one comes to us in John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Start us in verse 1, Mary Faye. John chapter 4, verse 1. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. For number two, Kat. Verse two, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples. Three, Julie. Verse three. He left Judea and departed again from Galilee. Four, Cora. Four, it says, now he had to go through Samaria. Actually, he doesn't have to go through Samaria. It's the, the direct route. Yes. Jews normally would walk around. It's kind of like if you wanted to get from Dasma to Tagaitai. Okay. What's the best way to get there? Straight. Straight, uh, right? Yeah. Straight yeah. down yeah. Algonaldo yeah. Highway, correct? And, yeah, and go through Silang. Go through Silang. Yeah. But if you don't want to go through Silang, can you get from Tagaytay? Can you get from Dasma to Tagaytay? Yes. You can, right? Mm -hmm. You go through Amadeo and GMA and go around the other side. You can do that. Too far. Yes. What's that, Mary? But Faye? it would take long. 
<laughs> it is kind of too far. GMA and then go all the way. That's how they do it. But the Jews would wa- would spend an extra day walking so that they didn't have to go through Samaria. They would go around. But Jesus goes straight. But Jesus went straight through town. But there's a reason why. Mm-hmm. I forgot whose read is. Raleigh, is it you? Verse 5. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Okay. Six. Chrissy? John 4 verse 6 says, Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the moon. Okay. Seven. Mary Faye. Seven. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? Hold on a minute. What time of day is this? At noon, about noon. Noon Noon time. Understanding women had to carry this 10-gallon bucket of water. Do you think they normally went to gather their water at middle of the day at 12 noon? No. Why not? It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. (laughs) It's hot. It's hot. Outside. So when do you think most of the women came to get their water? At dawn early morning. Or... Early morning, right? Or later. Why do you think this woman is coming at noon? Because she doesn't want to be with the rest of the other women. Yes. <laughs> you know what? I think they had Marites even back then. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> Katrina. He's tra- he's, she's trying to uh, put herself away from everybody, seclude yeah, herself. Yes. Why, how come? Because maybe there is something that um, she's famous about. Yes, we're, we're, about to find about it. we're about to find out what that is, aren't we? Yeah. Because she's a woman of many men. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Uh, four eight. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Julie. Verse nine. The Samaritan woman said to him, "How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans." They don't even talk to us. They're Saplado. Yep. Cora, 11. Verse, verse 10, it says, Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who is who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you a living water. Okay. Raleigh. 11 now. Verse 11, the woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. The well is deep. Where where do you get that living water? It's deep. 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 The well is deep. Okay. Chrissy. Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank? From its, from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock. Okay, Mary Fay, thirteen. Thirteen. Jesus answered, "Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again." Fourteen, Cat. Fourteen. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. 
welling up to eternal life. Julie. In verse 15, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. 16, Cora. 16. He told her, go call your husband and come back. Oops. 17, Raleigh. 17. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying, I have no I have no husband. You have no husband. Oh, Chrissy. The fact is, verse 18 says, the fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Why does she want to go hang out with Demeritus? He doesn't mm. want to. Mary Faye. She doesn't want to be talked about her past husband. <laughs> or the fact she's been living with a guy she's not married to, right? Mm -hmm. you know. but Jesus is going to minister to her and I'm out of time so I'm going to let you read the rest of the chapter on your own time but you will see at the end of the chapter that she is going to go into the town in Samaria and tell everybody about Jesus Christ that's our job remember from whence you came Remember how to be a Christian and just share the joy with other people. Let me stop broadcasting here. <laughs>